This video is going to cover the topics of variables and lists. Let me show you my, my idea here first. This is my game screen. It's not really a game, but it's a good way to show you these ideas. The user will click the next button. This label will change. The background color will change to match the word that will be printed here. When they find the color they like best, they'll click that's it. Nothing fun is really going to happen, but once they click it, we'll do something. So let's got, talk about variables. First of all, let's go here into variables, and we're going to grab this top one where we're going to initialize this variable. Initialize means we're going to create the variable for the first time. A variable is a place to store information. We're going to store two different kinds of information in this video. One will be a list of information, and the other variable will just store a number. Let's talk about the different types of variable and variables in Thunkable. The app variable is a variable that will be used on this screen only. It's also called a local variable. The stored variable is a variable that can be used from one page to the next. We also call that a global variable. There's also a cloud variable in Thunkable. We will not be using that in this class. Feel free to explore that on your own and use it however you want. So for this information, this list will only be on this page. So I'm going to keep this as an app variable. And what this is going to hold is a list of colors. So I'm calling it something that makes sense, a color list. Okay, now we'll go over to the lists. And I'm going to grab this first block. This is going to help me create a list. And I want a list of colors, not numbers. So I will highlight each of these and delete these numbers from my list. Instead, I want a list of colors. So I'll go into the text. I'll grab a text block. And I'm going to, I want to create four colors. So I will duplicate that many times. Now I said I want four colors, but there's only room for three here. If you click on this little wheel, it allows you, you can see there are only three items in my list, this will allow me to add a fourth, fifth, one hundredth item, as many items as you want. Okay, I'll type in some colors here. These will be the colors that will show up when the user clicks next. Okay, that's our first variable. This variable is storing a lot of information. It's storing a list of four different items. Let's create a second variable. I'm going to initialize another app variable. So this will only be a variable that is used on this page. And what this one will do is help us keep track of which item in the list. So which item are we using in the list currently? Is it the first one, the second item, the third item, or the fourth? So this is going to keep track of which item we're on. So I'm going to start that with the first item. So in the math, I'll grab this number, and I'll put the number one there. So that when the page opens, we'll begin with the very first item in the list. All right, let's use this information now. So when the page does open, when game screen opens, I want to change my label to be this color in the background and this name in the, in the text. So in my color label, I'm going to first change the text. And I want to change the text to be this word in the list. So in my list, I'm going to say, I'm going to scroll down here, and you can say, in this list, go get. So I'm going to grab this out, and instead of creating a new list, I'm going to use the list in, that's stored in this variable. So I'll go here to variables, and I'm going to say, I want to use this variable, this list that I created up above. I want to go get the value of this variable. I'm going to grab this one, and I'll say, which item do I want to grab? 
Well, currently the item is number one. So when this page opens, it's going to say, go into this color list, get item number one. So that will get orange. I'm going to change the background color to do the same thing. So I'll go say in my color label, I'm going to grab my background color and to save me some time, I want it to be the exact same value. So I'll copy and paste that. I want it to be the exact same value. Okay, let's go check that out and see what that does. When the game screen opens, it should go into this list. Since our variable is at a value of one currently, it will go in and get the first item, which is orange, and make the text orange. We'll also make the background color orange. Let's go check that. There's the word orange, and the background color is orange as well. Okay, now we need to create a way for the user to click that next button, and we'll scroll through each of these items in the list every time they click next. Okay, so let's hit get the next button. And when they click next, the first thing we need to do is increase this value. We started out at one, which gave us orange to begin with, but now we need to move up and we need to add one to this in order to get to the second item in the list. So we're gonna do a little bit of math here. Let's go into variables first. We're going to set, now notice it's the wrong variable that we're working with, so we've got to change that. Set which item in the list, and we're going to do a little bit of math. We'll grab the plus sign, and we're going to say we want to add one to this variable. So I'll go into the variable, and I'm going to grab the which item in the list. All right, so when they click next, we take the value of which item in list, so right now we're at one, we're going to add one to it and store it back in that variable again. So when they click next, now this value, which item in list, becomes two. When they click next again, it becomes three and four and five and six and so on. Okay, we're gonna make this easy. We'll change the background color and the text of that label to be the new color for the item in the list. So I'm just going to copy and paste what we did up above, and it should just change each time. So they click next, increases this to two, go get the second item in the list, which is yellow. We'll make the text yellow and the background color yellow. Let's try it. Make sure this is going to work. There's yellow, there's pink. There's green. Now watch what happens when I click again. It says undefined. And that's because now this is saying, go get item number five. We don't have a fifth item in our list. So what happens is Thunkable says, I don't know what you're talking about. There are only four items, undefined. What we want to do is start back at the top again. So to do that is going to be one simple if statement. So in control, I'm going to click if, and I keep dragging it out the wrong way. There we go. I'm going to click if. I'm going to say, if we have reached the end of the list, reset it. Okay, so I'm going to go get an equal sign. If this variable, which item in the list, is equal to the length of our color list. So I'm going to grab this block. And I'm going to delete that list and use our color list. So if the length of the color list, which is four, and that's the same as the item in list that we're on, let's do a reset. Let's start this variable over at the beginning so that we can start back from the top. So we'll say, let's go set this variable. I'm going to set it to zero and not one because the next time they click the next button, that will add one to it, making this one, starting it back again. Let's go take a look. Now it should scroll through, yellow, pink, green, back to orange, yellow, pink, and green. And when they click, that's it. We'll just, we would do something else, but that's up to you. 
Okay, that's it.